Hello and welcome to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And today we're talking about Jumanji's. Yeah, Jumanji. <laughs> There's three. It's three manjis. Three manjis. <laughs> Which, but I said to you before, I honestly thought there was four of them. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but I think I confused another Rock in the Jungle movie. <laughs> yeah, because he's in Journey. I think it's Journey 2. And Journey 2 and... Oh no, wait, Journey was Brendan Fraser. Oh, and then he was in the Journey sequel. Two, yeah. Okay. And people were like, Brendan, why weren't you in Journey 2? And he was like, my life's gone to shit. Oh, no. <laughs> and then he's in the upcoming, he's going to be in the Jungle, not the Jungle Book, like the Jungle Cruise, like the Disney. The Rock, not yeah, Brendan Fraser. Yeah, uh, not Brendan. Brendan Fraser's going to be at Fan Expo Vancouver oh, 2020. <laughs> nice. But first things we like? Yeah. So, Dan, have, do, do you like anything? Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff here. <laughs> well, so, well, because I got you to post that picture of some comics that I bought. So, I reread uh, Bond Varger and then reread or read Bond uh, Eidolon, mm -hmm. which were both very enjoyable. I read uh, Injection Volume 1 to 3, which is by Warren Ellis and Declan Shalvey. And that's like a um, basically like a group of scientists and stuff like that. They got together and they were feeling that, you know, history was going to stagnate, like, technology-wise and this. So they create, like, a machine learning program, but they imbue it with a magic intelligence, and they just released it into the internet. And it's five <laughs> years later, and, you know, now there's some weird shenanigans happening, and then they got to deal with it. It's pretty cool. It's very enjoyable. Well-written, good art, and etc. And then I read Doctor Sleep, which was the sequel to The Shining book by Stephen King, of course. Mm -hmm. And I did an episode about the movie and etc. Uh, so the book was interesting because obviously the book had more characters and, you know, etc. and more explanations about stuff, which is fine. But the weirdest thing to me was it has, like, everyone lives. Like, it has a happy ending. And I was Weird. like, isn't this supposed to be like a horror, Stephen King horror book thing? But mm. so anyway, because in the movie, like, a ton of people die. In fact, almost all the characters die. <laughs> so I was kind of like, huh, that was kind of different. So yeah, it was pretty good still, though. I enjoyed it. I'm not usually a fan of his uh, writing, but it was all right. Hmm. And then I read a book called Bad Blood by John Carreto. That's Carreto. The, the, the Silicon Valley company. Yeah, the fake science lady. Yeah, it was, it was a company <laughs> called Theranos. And so this was a book and he's written, he is a, uh, I think it was Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Like he's a reporter, and he was the guy who kind of broke the story about, uh, hey, this is no no bueno kind of thing. <laughs> and the whole book just, it just descends into madness. I think I read it over four days because I could just not stop reading it because it was just everything about what this woman was doing and this company was doing was insane. Oh, cool. And it's just got this huge, like, hubris and CEO worship that, like, anytime someone would, like, raise any kind of objection to that, her, she would just fire them. Instead of like, and it's like, that's not how you run a good company. But anyway, so it's insane. It was very interesting. Very good. I just randomly chose it because it was in Libby's like, hey, this is popular. And I was yeah. like, all right. It was madness. Really cool read. Like this was still, this is still going on. Like her court case is going to get dragged on for like, you know, years. But it's nice. like, this just happened last year, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I remember hearing about it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, it's nuts. Uh, totally worth reading. And then the last thing. Was something that we spoke of um, and that you weren't really kind of into, but I saw 1917. Oh, was it good? It was amazing. It's uh, one continuous shot, right? It, well, it's shot in that, it's, it's presented in that style. Okay. It obviously was not because they do some stuff where it's like, you know, the, the guys will kind of crest something and then it'll kind of focus on the dirt a little bit and then like rise oh, up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's like, you know, there's an edit point there, but it's all shot or presented as like kind of a one adventure kind of thing. The director, Sam Mendez, uh, he did Skyfall. And he wrote it with another person called uh, Kriti Wilson Cairns. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it was amazing. Visually, very interesting. It was some of the most tense I've been watching a movie. Like the first 20 minutes was like the most tense thing oh, yeah? ever. It was incredible. And I can't handle that. It was so it tense. It took me so long to watch The Night Manager <laughs> because that show is so tense. <laughs> Yeah, it, I had to like break after every scene. I, I didn't. I couldn't believe like how well that was executed. That I I was tense watching these two guys crawl and go through like no man's land of a World War One trench area, and I was just like, "What are you doing?" Like the whole time, <laughs> and it's it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. Uh, very good. Obviously deserves all the praise it's getting. I would highly recommend checking that out. I won't. Well, <laughs> but listen, <you> might. <laughs> and that, that was it for me. Cool. Um, I rewatched Doctor Strange. 
Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a good. And one. Civil War. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, um, they're both good. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. Oh, yeah. I just finished all the episodes up to now, but it's ongoing. Um, for Ronan Farrow's podcast, Catch and Kill, hmm. which is uh, he wrote the article that like got Harvey Weinstein into all the trouble. Mm-hmm. And it's a really interesting podcast because he has a book called Catch and Kill about Harvey Weinstein. Oh, okay. But the podcast is kind of about interviewing all his sources and mm-hmm. like the crazy shit that went on behind the scenes because it was supposed to be like filmed for NBC and it was squashed by NBC oh, wow. because Harvey Weinstein reached out to them yeah. and there was all sorts of like Neil Oppenheimer is like the dude right. in charge of NBC and mm. he wrote the script <laughs> for Jackie which is starring Natalie Portman okay which Harvey Weinstein was producing so he kind of like squashed the story right, and right. I know it's really interesting mm. it's very good I highly recommend it if you're interested in journalism right or true crime. Sure. Or crazy <laughs> shit that happens in real life. Well, and uh, just a, a back to bad blood real quick, is that she got Rupert Murdoch to invest in her company, who owns the Wall Street Journal, and oh, she shit. tried to get the story squashed yeah, yeah. multiple times. And then in a weird twist, Rupert Murdoch was like, no, nah, the editors know what they're doing. And, you know, <sighs> if it's if it's fake, they'll, they'll cut, kill the story. Yeah. And so the story never got killed because it wasn't faked. <laughs> Well, NBC, like, to this day is like, oh, they didn't have, like, they didn't have named sources, they right. didn't have this, they didn't have that, but they did, Sure. as well as a recording oh. <laughs> of Harvey Weinstein admitting to, like, sexually yeah. assaulting somebody. Yeah. Anyways, it's very good. They play the recording. It's interesting. Uh, cool. And I recommend it. Nice. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about something much, like... Hearted <laughs> it is and it isn't when you think about it. Why is this pretty spidget Harvey Weinstein? No, but it, there's a horror element to Jumanji. Especially yes. the first one. <laughs> yeah, okay, so can I just start off by saying something? Sure. 1995? Five, yeah. Yeah, 1995 Jumanji with Robin Williams and Helen Hunt and Kristen Dunst. Bonnie Hunt. Bonnie Hunt. Yeah. I knew it was some kind of. And the kid, uh, Bradley Pierce. Is... Nobody cares about him. Yeah, I know. He doesn't show up anymore. <laughs> other He's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, that movie mm-hmm. feels incredibly different from the two new Jumanji. Well, sure. They're made in different eras. But, like, beyond just, like, practical effects versus... CG. CG. It, it... The original has kind of a dark, serious tone. It's got like the 80s kids horror yeah. tone almost going. With comedic elements. Yeah. And the new ones are comedies with action elements. Yeah, they're adventure comedies or comedy adventure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they don't they don't feel like they exist in the same canon. Yeah. No, totally agree. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, where do you want to start with this? Well, I think we could just say some stuff about the 1995 one, I guess. I mean, like you said, it, it's interesting because it has a budget of $65 million. Ooh. It did a worldwide box of 262.8, which is not huge numbers. Yeah. Decent profit. But I think it must have done well in, like, secondary market mm-hmm. because, um, like, obviously they didn't make a sequel. They made Zathura. But the in, like, 2000, I think it was, the guy who took over, I think Sony who had the rights, he really wanted to make... Like a Jumanji sequel. It was, oh, he really? was like, I want to make a Jumanji sequel. Obviously, it never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he w- it was like a thing he wanted to do, and they never did. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if he was just like emotionally attached to it. Yeah. He was just like, I love Jumanji. I love Jumanji! <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so Jumanji 1 is, like I was saying, it's, and like you were just saying, it has that horror tone to it. Well, I mean, aside from like death feeling very eminent yeah. in the whole thing. Sure. I mean, like... So he disappeared, Robin Williams disappears into the game as a kid yeah. in the 70s, 60s, whatever. Something. Like Doesn't that. matter. And we find out that his, people thought his parents killed him. Yeah. They lost their business, they lost all their money, and they died. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Bonnie Hunt, everybody thought she was crazy. Yes. Because she said he got sucked into a game. <laughs> and then she got attacked by bats. And then she got attacked by bats. 
And then nobody talked to her, so she didn't really form any relationships, and she's lived a lonely life, mm -hmm. and had to change her name <laughs> to Madam something, something yeah, yeah. and lives her life as a fortune teller. Yeah. That's pretty dark. Yeah, very. <laughs> oh, and then there's Kristen Dunst and her brother, whose parents have died. In and a car they, accident. In a car accident in Canada. Yeah. And now they live with their aunt in a new town, and... Kristen Dunst lies all the time, and her little brother doesn't talk at all. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Happy families. <laughs> very much so, yeah. So, yeah, like you said, it has a very dark kind of uh, kind of streak to it. But then, obviously, once the adventure starts, it's kind of like the danger just comes from the board game elements. Yes. Right? And I, well, I got just some real notes. So, like, I always like the look of um, the house and the stuff that comes out of the game so the outside of the house is filmed in Maple Ridge. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what I say. That's, that's filmed out here. Yeah. The interior they built, because then at the end, when the earthquake happens, they just split their own yeah, yeah. Uh, set open, which was really cool, and how they do it all. And I like the look of all the plants. That was one thing I wanted to bring up for the later movies, is we don't get any more deadly plants. I know, I like the deadly plants. Yeah. They're really and cool. I was like, that was a great element, and yeah. that's what made the jungle feel deadly. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of like, eh. I like most of the practical effects in the 1995 movie. Mm -hmm. I think they look cool. They obviously don't look real, yeah. but they look fun. For me, the only one that really fails, and even when I was a kid Monkeys? or younger... No, the spiders. Oh, yeah. Because there's that one close-up shot where you see it all kind of moving, and that's all an animatronic, and I think they're all animatronic anyway, but the way they walk is super puppetry Oh. And I just, I've never liked the look. And then they do the one CG shot when they all run away before the earthquake. And I was always kind of like, eh. Because like, the spiders, I'm afraid of spiders. And I'm not afraid of those spiders. That's fair. <laughs> right? And I was like, you should, it, this should be like the most creepy scene in the whole movie. <laughs> I never liked the monkeys. Yeah, they're all just pure CG. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's why. Mm. Their faces look wrong. Yeah. Although that scene when they open up the door and then the, the, the monkeys are all in the kitchen causing the chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the chaos is practical. Yeah. And then they CG'd the monkeys in afterwards. Interesting. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like yeah. the way they, I was watching a behind the scenes thing about how they did it. Yeah, they like timed everything and like all that stuff, chaos is all practical. That's cool. Uh, and then they CG'd the monkeys in afterwards. <laughs> but yeah, like the lion obviously doesn't look like a real lion. But it's, it's half and half actually. Oh, really? There's a real lion puppet an animatronic that they made and then there's the C a CG one. Oh, no, I mean like when it's a puppet, you know it's a puppet. Oh, sorry, okay. That's what I meant. Like, right. it's not like they didn't bring in an actual lion. Sure. <laughs> well, and this was one of the last Lame. few movies no. <laughs> that uh, kind of blended both of the techniques before a lot of movies went pure CG. Yeah, but some of the CG scenes look really good. Like, when Absolutely. all the animals are stampeding by when mm -hmm. the ants in the car at the traffic light. Yeah, yeah. That looks pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to point out that in my memory, mm. every movie Robin Williams is in, he's really over the top and annoying. Yeah. But he wasn't in this movie, and I'm wondering if, like, my tolerance level for over-the-top and annoying has raised because most comedy actors are over-the-top and annoying now. No, well, apparently he he is known famously for all, a lot of improv and stuff like that, and then apparently when he read the script for this one yeah. and spoke with the director and stuff like that, he realized that that wasn't the place for it and didn't do anything like that. Oh, interesting. He just played it totally straight to the script, you know, and acted, of course, because he's yeah. Robin Williams, but he didn't... Go Robin Williams, essentially. I really like him in it. No, he's great. He's great. <laughs> he's super great in it. And I also really like Bonnie Hunt in it. Yeah. I thought she was pretty great, too. Like, she's, like, taking care of the kids. Yeah. She thinks this is stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> well, the only thing that, that I really uh, didn't like always was, you know, after the stampede goes through the house mm -hmm. and they kind of get into the side room. And, like, that pelican grabs the board game. Oh, yeah, that's dumb. And then Robin Williams yells at the kid, and he's like, why didn't you grab the game? And I was like, the kid's not even near the game. Yeah. And I always wondered if that was, like, ADR, because later when the kid grabs it from the river, it's, like, makes it more heroic, or he's, like... Yeah. You know, he, he overcame it or whatever, but I was like... Is he a monkey at that point when he grabs it in the river? Or is he still a boy? I know he turns into a no, monkey because he cheats. Because he cheats. It's, it's after that. Because yeah. after he grabs it, he tries to roll the, the 12. Right, right, yeah. right. But I don't know. I was always kind of like, why is Robin Williams yelling at the kid when he wasn't near the game and Robin Williams was trying to, like, fend off the pelican? And I was like, you were the closest one to do yeah, anything. Yeah, come on, Robin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would never like that. I was always just kind of like, that was weird. Alan Parrish, Alan, if that is yeah. your real name. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that was one of my only kind of like things about that. I was like, that was kind of weird. So in my heart, mm -hmm. the 1995 one is the best one. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it, like, it still holds up. I mean, up. out of the three Jumanji. Sure. Not out of all films full. I didn't think so. <laughs> it still holds up really well today. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about you? I don't know. I think after... I was actually quite surprised by how much I enjoyed Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. The first one. No. That's 1995 Jumanji. The 2017 Okay, one. okay. Sorry. The way I'm thinking of it is there's 1995 Jumanji and yeah. then there's Jumanji 1 and <laughs> Jumanji 2. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't... They don't feel like the same... Like, it feels like a remake. Yeah. I know that they're sequels. I know that Yeah, they're like spiritual sequels. Yeah, but I know that there's like... There's things that tie it to the first... Like, the 1995 one. Yeah, yeah. But they don't feel like the same... Yeah. Well, and, and that's when, like, the, because I think the, the first one especially takes place in the real world, it feels like there's real stakes. Yeah, yeah. Like, what happens if someone dies? Like, does your piece just fall over and then you're not in the game anymore? Or you can't I, complete the game anymore because someone's dead and they can't I do their know. turn? Yeah, like, so, you know, there's elements like that where it's just kind of like, oh, and then, like, yeah, when the whole house gets affected and taken over mm -hmm. and, you know, she gets poisoned at the end yeah. Kirsten Dunst and she's dying on the ground yeah, <laughs> and you're, right? like, you're like holy jeez <laughs> right so, but, and Van Pelt's chasing Robin Williams all times just trying to shoot him yeah <laughs> it's like, that scene where Robin and Bonnie are stuck in the quicksand yeah but floor. it's hardened yeah and like they're trying to play and the spiders are everywhere that's yeah. so Ted yeah absolutely so it well is. done yeah yeah so it definitely ratchets it up anyway I don't know it's a great movie I yeah. still think it's worth the watch. I very much still enjoyed it when I was rewatching it for. But is it this. the best one in the Jumanjis? It is. It is the best. One. I think it is, but I think <laughs> I think the next one surprisingly is really close in quality. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I don't think the new ones are bad. No. There are. I take some issues with. Sure. But Welcome to the Jungle, at least. Well, let's go on to Welcome to the Jungle then. All Unless right. See, there's anything more you want to say about 1995. Jumanji. It's good. Go watch it. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. It's on Netflix. It was on Netflix, yeah. Yeah. Same like this one. Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. So. Interesting. It had a budget. Okay, well, so it's directed by Jake Kasdan, written by a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, not surprising. <laughs> yeah, like four writers here. I got listed down. And then the budget was 90 million. Box office worldwide, $962.1 million. Wow, I guess people really wanted a Jumanji sequel, or it's because The Rock was in it. I was super shocked to see that it made that much money, and I was like, oh, no wonder there was a sequel that came out. Yeah, and <laughs> like, there's probably going to be a third one. I imagine so, because this one's already topped uh, $700 million. <laughs> yeah, so I was, but I was shocked to see that it made that much money. And yeah. then, yeah, the cast, of course, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson was in there. You got Kevin Hart, Jack Black, Karen Gillian. Karen Gillian Kids. is great in this. Quite so she is. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Cavernell and Nick Jonas. I think, for me, though, the standout is Jack Black. Oh, Jack Black is great. His performance too. is ridiculously awesome. <laughs> so Jack Black is awesome because he plays a teenage girl in yeah. Jack Black's body. Yes. And he does it really, really well. Amazingly well. And it's very comedic. Karen Gillian's performance is of like a nerdy girl in her body yeah and it's a lot more subtle mm -hmm. but i think she does a really good job of like just like the way she stands yeah. and she's always covering her stomach and yes. she's kind of shy and awkward well and my favorite one of my favorite lines is literally when they first out there and then she sees her and she's like who wears this outfit in the jungle because <laughs> yeah. it's lara croft's outfit yeah. <laughs> so good so, so that got a good laugh for me and then of course the rock plays a spencer who is a kind of a nerd character Slash yeah. Dr. Bravestone, and he is the rock. And he is the rock, yeah. <laughs> and then there's always still those moments where he freaks out about, like, a bird walk, you know, going by. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, he'll be, like, a little bit further away from them, and he's like, hold it together, hold it yeah. together. <laughs> or just there's those couple times where it's like something happens, and he's immediately running away already. Yeah. Or the rest of are like, oh, we should run away. He's already <laughs> running away. So. Um, but, so this one... And Kevin Hart's pretty good in it. And Kevin Hart's pretty good in it. So, yeah, uh, at the end of Jumanji... 95, they throw the board game into the water. And it ends up in France. Yeah, but then somehow ends up back in America. Yeah, they French were like, I'm not <laughs> yeah. going to play this yeah, one game. <laughs> they threw it back in and then ended up in 1996. So literally a year later, it's found by somebody. And then he gives it to his brother. And he's his like... Son. No, it was like... Was it? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just like... Dad found a, it. Oh, okay. I thought it was I a brother think. situation. 
Anyway, and he's like, like, who plays board games? Blam, throws it away. Yeah, because he's too cool for a school. Way too cool. And then it becomes a video game console. Overnight. Yeah, magically. And, and then he plays it and gets sucked in. Yeah. And that's and then, where I have questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, okay, obviously cool, fine, it's changing itself to a video game. I was not a fan of the fact that it was becoming a video game uh, initially. Yeah. But I thought they did execute the premise well. Yeah, I agree. But... Here's my thing, is that eventually when all our characters get all sucked in, so there's five of them in the game, and I was like, is the game completable by one person? Mm. And if also, not, then when you're sucked in forever and you've got to wait till what, eventually four more people get sucked in? What old video game from 1996 has five players? Yeah, four <laughs> players max, at the, and most likely two players. <laughs> Unless you're talking a big arcade cabinet. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Magic. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, so, uh, again, with the premise, I was like, ah, oh, man, but... Because it was, you know, kind of changing the stakes where it's like they get sucked in versus yeah. the game coming to you. Yeah. Fine. Um, standout performance mm -hmm. by a random side character is the dude from Flight of the Concords as an NPC. Yeah. Uh, Rhys Davis. I like him. Or Rhys Darby, sorry. I thought he did a very good job. As Nigel. <laughs> being Nigel. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he's always like... Of not reacting to what people say. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Bravestone. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought he did a, did a good job there, of course. Can I tell you something I didn't like about... Sure. Into the Welcome Friends? Welcome to the Jungle, yeah. I thought there was too many dick jokes. I thought they really focused on that. Yeah, there was the whole sequence with the... the with men, uh, Jack back peeing. Yeah. 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 I just... I don't know. I it thought did it, seem weird. It was weird and unnecessary to me. Right. And like, I guess they had to comment on it, but did they actually have to comment on it? Well, it was like they could have just done this thing where... Because he, he was like, I'm sorry, someone's going to have to help me or whatever. And then they could have just moved on. Like, yeah. they didn't have to film that whole scene with sequence, the three of them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just didn't really like it that much. I, I kind of no, felt like it was like weird... Right. Yeah. But things I did like about the movie, mm -hmm. I like that the girls start developing a friendship. Like, sure. they look beyond their social status. Yeah, because and... uh, she's super popular and the other yeah. one's super nerdy. What's her name? M Malady? Bethany. Bethany. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her growth in it. Yeah. Yeah, that was all cool, but I thought the dick jokes was a little excessive. Yeah, that's fair. And I did really like Karen Gillian's um, dance fight scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it had the music. Were you okay with that? Because I know you're not a fan of the music. That was... Okay. Ooh, baby. <laughs> it made sense yeah. because there was this speaker box and, like, her whole thing was that she dance fights. Yes. That's different than, like... I know. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I still really... Of course, before that sequence, the when she's trying to learn how to flirt. Flirt, yeah. And to flirt with the guys. Hilarious. Super hilarious. Because they're NPCs and just giving, like, most random... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here, little lady? And then she's like, ha ah, that's so funny. <laughs> but that was, of course, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, so... Yes, yeah, so we didn't really explain the yeah, plot. We're working off the premise that people know the plot. Uh, well, here, so they, they get sucked into the game, okay. and then they get this thing where it's like, okay, there was a Julu Jumanji, Van Pelt, call back to the other one. He wants to keep the gem for himself, to control the Jumanji jungle. Dr. Bravestone, you gotta get it to the statue, put it in, and win the game. And say Jumanji. And say the, say the name, yeah, and win the game. And then it's just like, Go. And then they have three lives, we find out. And I did like how they had, like, skills and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of cool because it's a, cool. Game, a video game element that I did like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make a lot of jokes about stuff or this or that because it's like, you know, my weaknesses is <laughs> speed and endurance. And cake. <laughs> and cake, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, there was some good stuff there. Or the smoldering intensity, hilarious. <laughs> Great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I liked that element and... This is what's really kind of crazy because a lot of times people are like, oh, movies can be like like a video game or that, you know, there's an action sequence and this is literally that. Yeah. And it's like, they're like, we have to just go to the next level of the game. <laughs> yeah. Right? But it's a video game, so it makes sense. Yeah. But it actually works as, yeah. as a structure. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. yeah. But uh, this was what we were saying previously is we don't get anything, like it doesn't feel as deadly of a jungle to me. No. Which I didn't like. It's a lot rompier. Like, you're in a fun romp. <laughs> yeah, which I, you know, they get that in the beginning where that hippo eats Jack Black, I think it is. He eats Bethany. 
Right. Yeah, he eats Bethany, and it's like, yeah. oh, so the animals are deadly, but, you know, then they just move on to the next thing, and especially it's in the next one, but, like, the animals, I feel like there wasn't... It was cartoony. Well, and they just weren't used, like, for a horror-ish element, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I was like, oh, I wanted, like, these animals are supposed to be weird, and it's Jumanji, yeah. right? And I was like, eh. Because <laughs> yeah. then they, they, the more antagonist forces are just people. Yeah. Right? And I was like, eh. So the bad guy. Yeah. Who, what actor is that? Um, his name is Bobby Cannavale. Is he from Everybody Loves Raven as the brother? No, because I think that's a comedian guy who's taller. Oh, okay. Him, right? <laughs> he does look similar now that you yeah. mention it, but it's not, I don't think it's, it's not him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He was good. Sure, everybody. He, he was a one-dimensional character, but he was supposed to be. Yeah, he's just a one-dimensional video game bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so the first level is just them... What is the first level? It's just... The, the, the rumble. I don't know. <laughs> I can't... You know what? I'm really having a hard time because the first movie and the second movie, or the two new movies, mm. are so similar in structure yeah. that I really am confusing... I know there's more characters in the second one. Sure. And there's a horse. And there's the horse, yeah. But I just am really mixing up all the events. Sure. And I've, like, I've seen the first one twice. I saw the second one in theaters. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, like, I'm having a really hard time remembering what movie and what happened. Fair yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, so, uh, eventually, they go to, like, this uh, bazaar. There's this, uh, the fun fight sequence with The Rock where he's just beaten up on all the yeah. guys and stuff like that, which is pretty fun. And then they meet... Joe Jonas. Joe Jonas, and he's Seaplane. That's yeah. his character, who turns out to be... A pilot. The, the pilot, and the kid from 26 oh, years ago. yeah. Right. And who, he, as an adult, is played by Tom Hanks' son. Yes. Colin Hanks. Colin Hanks, yeah. And he doesn't realize he's been in the game that long. He thinks yeah. he's been there for a few months. That's right. <laughs> and he gets to use fun 90s lingo. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they really played that up a little too much. I was like, yeah. um, calm that down. <laughs> <a bit." laughs> <Dial back. laughs> yeah. But yeah, so then they get the helicopter, and they get the, you know, go to the next thing, and then eventually there's the end sequence where... They yeah. all have to work together. They all have to work together. They only have one life left yeah. each. And it's all super intense-ish. Yeah. And again, there's some kind of like, it, uh, the, the, the multiple lives thing kind of for me takes away some of the tension. But then I also understand because it it's a video game. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because even at the end when I was like, well, Bethany, or not Bethany, um, Ruby Roundhouse. What's her name? Martha. She still had, she had two lives. Oh, did she? Yeah, because she sacrifices. Oh, yeah, because she sacrifices. A yeah, life that's to, right. like, get the jewel and stuff like it's that. Like so. poison. Yeah. Step on snake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so they all work together and, you know, do the thing and yeah. then Jumanji. <laughs> and then Jumanji. And then they win. Yeah. Fast forward to the next one. Well, uh, just before. <laughs> <laughs> all um, I want to talk about is as actors impersonating Danny DeVito because that was the best part of the sure. second one. But like I said, just a couple more things here about this one. Fine. I would have liked to have seen more time pass so then they have to kind of like learn more about the video game. Like a video game. Like when you play yeah. a video game, an old video game, you die multiple times like Edge, Edge of Tomorrow what that was the, the whole inspiration is you relearn from yeah. your deaths. This they kind of just die and move on. Yeah. It was like there was no kind of like learning. So I'd have liked to see them like learn a did pattern. It to you, did it feel like Joe Jonas had died more than three times? He mentions two deaths. Yeah. The crocodiles. And then crashing or something. And like, crashing Or, or getting plane. shot down or something yeah. like that. Yeah. But I felt like it really did feel like he had died more than that. Right. In that time that he was there. Yeah. And, and again, that's one of the things, my, one of my complaints is that they don't really, it's like, it's that multiple life thing. I'm like, eh, it doesn't. Mm, yeah. You know, because Rob Williams stuck in the board game. He didn't have multiple I, he lives. He didn't have multiple lives. <laughs> but it wasn't a video game. It was still a board game. Sure, but it was still like... And then like... Still pretty dangerous. <laughs> with Robin Williams, when he was in the game, was it like when they were in the game? Like, did he yeah. have to find the jewel of Jumanji? Exactly. And Or was he in it? Is or it, is it because it was like a video game that like... It was a board game. He was just in the jungle. Until someone rolled five or eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, but the hunter was still there. Yes. And well, and that's just it. It's like the jungle he sounds like he comes from is far more dense, less people. Yeah. Far more deadly. But it was the same jungle because his name was on the thing. I think that was just his house transported by this 
demon dimensional <laughs> board game because, like I said, the jungle they lived in didn't seem as dangerous. Yeah, that's we true. We didn't see bats. We didn't see those giant mosquitoes. We didn't see any of the deadly plants. Like, yeah, really lacked in deadly plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe those plants aren't deadly in Jumanji. They're only deadly in our universe. Oh. <laughs> I figured it out. But Ron Williams knows about him, so... He, he, knew. Mm, he knew. Good point. <laughs> Maybe there's a different... No, because in his house. Yeah. Oh, Jumanji, why are you such a puzzle box? <laughs> yeah, so like I said, I would underst- I, I do understand because the budget of only $90 million is not that huge yeah. for a movie like this. So that's, I can understand why there wasn't more creatures and more of those kind of effects. And they used people more as antagonists, right? So it's like... I think also having more horror elements mm-hmm. wouldn't... It wouldn't feel like... A video game right. to a bunch of producers, right? Who right. have clearly never played <laughs> anything horror movies, <laughs> yeah. games, yeah. right? Or Resident horror video Evil. Games. Yeah. yeah, never played Resident Evil. Yeah. Or um, what's the other? Silent Hill. Silent Hill. Really? <laughs> They've never played those. But when they think video games, yeah. they think of Halo. Right. Two. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But I think, like, like we uh, just uh, I I said I enjoyed this. Far more than I thought, because I didn't see it in theater, because I was like, I don't, whatever. And then you were like, let's do some Jumanji. And I was like, all right. So I watched this, and I was like, wow, that was actually really enjoyable. Oh, totally. The actors were charismatic and fun together. Yeah. The, you know, the story Even was fine. Even the teens were fun. Yeah, exactly. So I was kind of like, wow, that was well made and good on them. Yes. Ding, ding. You win. And then, like you said, so this one had a super quick turnaround time, because they finished filming this movie, I think, in May. I know, because I've been watching Jack Black's YouTube channel. Oh, have you? Okay, sorry. I, I didn't I didn't know that. Oh, well, he's been like blogging or vlogging blogging. about it, sorry. Yeah. And then yeah, so it came out at the end of twenty nineteen, which is crazy. Uh-huh. And it's called the next level. Oh, and I didn't know that's what it was called. So this one had a budget of one twenty five million, so up to budget a little bit. And so far it's it went made... to that chimp scene. Yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> and then so far it's made seven hundred and eleven point seven million. The... Hundred million dollars, so it's probably going to re- almost reach the same numbers that it's that it previously did. Good for them. Which yeah, it's super good for them. So we enter, and the kids are still friends, but the sort ma- of. There's main some... kid is like a just being like a goober in New York. Well, they're in college slash university yeah. now, right? And Spencer. Spencer, yeah. He's been a mopey boy. He is. He yeah. Doesn't want to talk to his girlfriend. Well, he figures her life is better now without him. Yeah, he's right, because he's a mope. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag justice for Martha. <laughs> Bethany's traveling the world. Yeah. She's being cool. Uh, Fridge is around. Working out. Yeah. <laughs> Doing stuff. So Spencer comes home for the holiday where Grandpa Danny DeVito is. Yeah. He's mad at his friend. Milo. Yeah. Milo. Which actor was that? That's a... Uh... Danny Glover. Danny Glover. Thank you. Hey, he was in Lethal Gun, right? Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. Whatever. (laughs) Anyways. Mm. They're fighting. He comes over. They all end up in the video game. Yeah. Because he misses brunch or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. So Spencer (laughs) in the evening is just like, man, I miss being, feeling awesome. And he's like, Bravestone. And then he goes and pieces the board game back together because they broke it at the end of the last one. Yeah. The and video then, game. Yeah, the video game. And then he enters he the in. world. Yeah. yeah. And then they're all like, oh, that's kind of weird. Where's Spencer? They go to his house and then they find the console. Because <laughs> they hear the drums. Yes. And then Danny DeVito, Danny Glover, Fridge, and Martha get sucked in, but Bethany does not. Which is a huge issue to me because she could be seaplane. Like there was already enough characters. <laughs> well, plus the other character. Well, there's not even any need to introduce the horse yet. <laughs> I love the horse. <laughs> yeah, but, but I just meant like there was no need. Like she could have been sucked in and then played seaplane. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Because we find out later that Spencer is not Bravestone. He's Aquafina. He is um, Ming Fleetfoot, <laughs> which I liked. He was like, it's, she's a thief, like sneaky, blah, yeah. blah. And it alerted to Paul and he's like, she's me. <laughs> so I thought it was a funny yeah, it was situation. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, so Danny DeVito is now The Rock. He's now Bravestone. So The Rock does an excellent Danny DeVito impression, but not as good as Aquafina. <laughs> yeah. And then... Milo uh, is... Uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. He's, he's Mouse. And Kevin Hart, like, the funniest for me, like, one of the funniest mm-hmm. things was 
watching Kevin Hart be Daddy Glover. Yeah, no, he does a very funny <laughs> job and so very good, good about it. And he's all just <laughs> talking super slow about everything. And, yeah. Fridge is Jack Black. Yeah. Which, it's hard for like a white guy in 2019 <laughs> to pretend to be a black guy. Yeah. It borders on touching. Problematic. Yeah. But again, I think this Jack Black is a standout. Oh, he's great. Because uh, he was really good. I believe that he was Fridge. <laughs> I did too. Yeah. But I just wanted to mention that. All right, fair enough. Not always the coolest thing to sure. do. And then um, Martha is back in Karen Gilliam. Yes. Yeah. And they Ruby go, Roundhouse. Ruby Roundhouse. Killer of men. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked watching The Rock pretend to be Danny DeVito. Yeah. Well, and so they go in and then they all have like either a new skill or slightly different skill and potentially a new weakness. That's right. Uh, which was good. I and was the like, game oh. has changed. And the game is different. Because that's when they were like, because that's, they were confident about being able to go in. Because they're like, yeah. we did it. We'll, we'll be able to go do it in. Again. And no problem. Yeah. And then they get in and then the game is different. <laughs> yeah. Which... Uh, from a meta kind of like outside, what a easy slash great idea for a franchise because you can just always write something different and you can write anything. Oh yeah, it's a magical video game world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would have liked because the game was broken and then repaired. Mm. I would have liked to see more weird glitchy stuff happen oh, yeah. personally. Like Spider Verse when like yeah yeah like glitching out yeah yeah. That would have been kind of cool. That would have been cool. Like the background sky is like messed up or something yeah, yeah. like that. Oh yeah, I never thought about that. That would have been cool to me, but this was good too. But it's an evil dimensional weird board game that can transform itself. So yeah, but it, it can been, just self-repair. Could, could have been evil glitchy. No, but it just self-repairs. That's yeah, what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but I like, I would have liked some glitch. Right. Well, and I liked in this one how basically Karen Gillian and Jack Black stepped up into the leads because they had kind of been there before so they're yep. taking more of the lead role versus the rock and kevin, uh, hart. kevin hart yep um and then so uh and again i think in this one similar complaints to the previous one where so the first level is they get involved in like with an ostrich swarm yeah and and again later like you said the monkeys thing the mandrills later it's like the animals were just used for chase sequences in this one and yeah. i was like ah oh, man again i wanted some variety in the animal usage and just them doing stuff but so that's the first level is they end up on a desert and the plot is slightly different now that there is a jewel that kind of, you know, is a fertility slash farm jewel mm. kept crops alive and the mountain, no, not the mountain, the hound <laughs> has it. And uh, what's Was that that actor? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, he looked different without makeup. Without, without his burnt face. <laughs> they recognize him. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, did I write down his name here? Oh yeah, Rory McCann. That's it. Jurgen, oh. Jurgen the brutal. Cool. He's stolen the gem, and he's you know living in his castle. Go get the gem. Why is he? Doesn't matter. It's a video game. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And so level one is they end up in a desert, and then they get attacked by ostriches. And they beat them. And they got to do a chase sequence with some dune buggies. Yeah. Whatever. Then they end up in this bazaar. In the bazaar, yeah. Um, where they find Spencer, yeah. who's now Ming. Ming. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they split up for a bit. Mm -hmm. And so Spencer and Kevin Hart. Yeah. And The Rock. And, and The Rock. Yeah. Go to Brave find uh, camels. Yeah. Which they find out that Kevin Hart can talk to camels. Yeah. He talk to animals. Yeah. He's a linguist. That's his new skill. And then uh, The Rock has a hilarious fight scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's just like... They're like, just keep a lookout, you know, keep a low profile. And then he's just yelling at everyone who walks by. <laughs> yeah. just, and then he ends up beating up a ton of people. Because it's The Rock being Danny DeVito, yeah. which is great. <laughs> uh, but then we discover that there's magical lightning water that if two people are in it at the same time, they change bodies. Yes. And also the fruit of the Jumanji tree, which was like a really dumb element of the movie. And I thought they could have done without. Right. Yeah. yeah like, what did you even think of the character switching ability? I don't know. I thought it was kind of dumb. I also didn't like it as an element because I was like, eh, the whole point is supposed to be this is who you are and you got to deal with it and like learn the skills and I mean, it was fun to see different people play different people. Yes, because I was going to say I did like the scene when, of course, Fridge is in Ruby Roundhouse and he's just like, oh man, this body is insane. <laughs> and, he's just, and she's like, you don't understand. It's like a loaded gun. He's like, yeah, it's going to go off. And he just <laughs> smashes himself into a wall, <laughs> which I was like. Nice. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I thought that was funny, uh, but it was also like an uh, a 
element I didn't like yeah. that you could switch out. Yeah, I think that the reason that was in there was so that actors could pretend to be different actors. Of course. Yeah. And then at the end, they could do the whole thing where everyone's in a body that they're skilled with. They're and, used to. Yeah. yeah. And they can yeah. do the things. But uh, I was just kind of like, eh. <laughs> It was dumb. Yeah. Also, the whole Jumanji fruit tree thing was dumb. I'm like, oh, it's going to be an extra life. No. Right. Yeah, or I thought it was going to be some kind of element where, because at the end, when The Rock uses it, that it, I thought he could, like, eat it, and then he would become even stronger oh, to be able to fight Jurgen the Brutal. More sense. Yeah, not just, like, put it on him, and then he's like, oh, I'm covered in juice. <laughs> covered in grape juice. <laughs> no! No, I totally thought that they were all going to die. Mm. And then that was an extra, like a continue or right, something right. like that, right? Kind of um, in Ready Player One, when you, I don't know if they included that element in the movie, where, in the book anyway, he beats Pac-Man, and then he gets a coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that gives him an extra life when everyone dies around him. Yeah. And then he's able to win the game. That's right. I forgot so, about that. Uh, well, again, I don't know if that was in the movie. Yeah, I, uh, no, I thought it was going to be like, you know, like with yeah, yeah. Sonic where you go to get a continue. Well, and because the whole point of... And I, then they would all get revived and then take them down because yeah. they would have figured out how to beat them. Right, well, because Danny DeVito as Bravestone is just getting everyone killed constantly. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's just screwing it up. So much. He is and he isn't. Of course, he's like, he is when he's like not being Bravestone, but then yeah. he's Bravestone, he's, he's Bravestone, but yeah. he's just like, like he gets Spencer killed immediately when they first <laughs> introduce him. And yeah. Yeah, like he dies originally from, initially from the ostriches. That's right. Because yeah. he's just yelling at the, <laughs> the bird to go away. <laughs> <laughs> so. But I do like when they change bodies the second time, because mm -hmm. I think Aquafina does such a good job of being Danny DeFito. Yeah. It's so, like, the way she walks, yeah, like, she's, she's like, like hunched over, over, and, like, yeah. <laughs> when they ask her something, she's like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Although her accent just sounds like Natasha Lyonne, which I think is kind of funny. <laughs> nice. Well, yeah, so then the bar bizarre scene, they get the camels, they go away, then they go to the third level, which was, um, they're on these bridges that are all, like, rotating, and they're like, oh, we gotta get across, but then they get attacked by monkeys. Or man baboons. mandrils, is, is that they were t technically called. Mandrils. Yeah. Type of baboon, I guess. Or whatever. Oh. And Scary monkeys. Yeah. And then, so then, instead of, like, it could have been a tent scene anyway, but then it just becomes, like, CGI Silly. chase mess yeah. scene. And I was like, oh, it, it was already been, dangerous. <laughs> it would have been way more tense if they were just trying to get across on the moving. Yeah. And and some of them are breaking, some of them aren't. And yeah. I was, because I was like, oh, man, this is going to be kind of inter interesting. And then it was like, oh, just CGI monkey chase scene. But it was like, we had CGI ostrich chase scene. <laughs> Yeah. So I was kind of like, I was just, again, a little disappointed. And then this then is they, when Beth and Horsey show up. Yeah, so or it's Beth in the real world yeah. goes to Tom Hanks' son and she's like, this happened. And he's like, I'm in. Yeah. Because I, I have a wife and kids. I'm, I'm going to go play Jumanji. <laughs> my stakes are pretty high, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so they go in and he becomes seaplane again. Yes. And she becomes a horse. And I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. But it makes no sense. There was I, no selectable horse character. I don't care. How did they even get themselves sucked into the game? How did they get to that point in the game? Yeah. And I mean, the horse could fly, but, but they didn't know that Yeah, they that didn't point. know it till the end. <laughs> I just think it's funny that it's yeah. like, oh, we ran out of actors, so we're just going to get a horse. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was kind of... <laughs> it's stupid, but I love it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I was just like, just make him another character. It's fine. Yeah, no, I know. It's like, ah, uh, we ran out of actors in Hollywood, so we're just gonna get <laughs> ran this out of actors. Horse. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Judy Dance was busy making cats, so we got a horse. <laughs> so yeah, they they all meet back up, and then um, they find a river of the green water. So they all switch characters. Yeah. So they can be. Spencer can be Bravestone, so etc. Danny Glover talks too slow, so he's a horse. Yeah. Beth is back as Jack Black and really happy about it. Yeah. Bravestone is Spencer. Mm -hmm. Fridge is Kevin Hart. Is there anyone else? Well, Aquafina becomes. Oh, and Dina. Yeah, yeah Danny DeVito is Aquafina. Yeah. Ming Fleetfoot, as it were. <laughs> and then the final level is, you know, they got to infiltrate the castle to get the jewel. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and the craziness in six of them, they win the end. <laughs> sure well it's, no so sorry. spencer well immediately this is so funny because they're having a scene and yeah they're all talking and then uh, milo and and danny uh, aquafina have a scene there ming and then it's like they get captured 
Yeah. And then, and then so then it's just we're down to the main five. And, you know, they're like, okay, here's the plan. Uh, Ruby and Bravestone will infiltrate from the icy, you know, section, climb it up because they're the two brave ones. And the others yeah. will just, like, infiltrate, try to rescue the horse, and they're just going to do the things. Yeah. That's the plan, <laughs> essentially. Pretty much. Yeah. And then they do. And then they do. Uh, Jack Black and Kevin Hart... Pretend to be... Pre the brothers? Yeah, some kind of brothers. Not charisma Zav, but something close to that. <laughs> and then again, we get, like, an extended penis joke. Yeah, because one like, of them's a eunuch, apparently. Yeah, yeah. which have like... Did you guys run out of material? Maybe like, it's one of the writers. There's yeah. a lot of funny things in here. <laughs> Somebody's a horse. <laughs> Explore that. <laughs> it's got to be one of either Scott Rosenberg or Jeff Pinker, because they are the only two that wrote the same movies. Yeah. Or maybe it's Jack, uh, Jake Kasdan, because he directed... The first Maybe one and this one, and he wrote dicks. he wrote partially this one, so. <laughs> All right. So there's some three possibles <laughs> that that they wanted some kind of penis jokes in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they go in, and then they find the safe with they, after they break out Ming, but then the jewel's not in the safe. That's right. It's and on Jurgen. Yeah. 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 The hyena thing was weird. Yeah. Because it was like. He jumps down, or they like they and attack, they and then away. they're and then they're gone. Yeah, yeah. like oh, oh, we didn't do our job. Yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> we failed once. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Time to lay down and die. <laughs> well, and at this point as well, they're all supposed to only have one life. Yes, that's I right. recall. Even though I think one of them does die more than that, but anyway, that's a whole other thing. Okay. Well, um, and then yeah, because uh, seaplane goes through two of his lives like immediately yeah when he's trying to infiltrate he's like oh i'm just gonna walk that and i was like you've been you lived in jumanji you figured out a whole trap you system know, you Kevin. should know that there's traps well it's been like 30 years from <laughs> he's forgotten it's, yeah <laughs> like he and then he yes he steps on gets darted immediately and i was like yeah what are you, what are you dumb you have a family this yeah. is so irresponsible <laughs> and then he dies again and then you know they break out the horse afterwards. yeah okay the horse is free yeah Jorgen is starting to figure out that the brothers aren't who they say they are, but Jillian comes in at the last minute to say she's his bride. Yeah, because that was supposedly the deal was, I'll give you the jewel for your sister yeah. to marry. Yeah. Okay, we just found that out. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter at this point. Right. Anyway, the fight scene happens. <laughs> Spencer goes after Jorgen. Mm -hmm. They're fighting on the blimp. You know what would have made more sense with the rest of the story? Okay. If he had to, like, rely on his friends yes. because he needed their help. Yeah, because that was the whole uh, point of the first one. They all had to work together at the end. But specifically in this one, he kind of separates himself from his friends because he, like, feels like they're all too good for him or whatever. Yeah. It would have been cool if, like, they had to work together because, like, yeah. it's all about teamwork. But yeah. instead, they're just watching. Yeah, yeah, they, they all ended up on the blimp and had to do something. Yeah, yeah. it would have made more sense. But whatever. If they did end up on the blimp, then we wouldn't get be able to find out that the horse is actually a Pegasus, and then we wouldn't have Fina riding a Pegasus into the sunset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, Bravestone beats up beats up Jurgen, gets the jewel, gives it to gives it to Ming, to Ming and then they fly it to the they sun. They fly above the clouds. Yeah. They say Jumanji. They win the game. Danny Glover has cancer, so he's gonna be a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just like I'm gonna stay in Jumanji and I'm like again what's the what's the what's going on here does yeah. this world persist <laughs> the game is different the jungle who knows what's happening it's all unexplained <laughs> yeah because even in the first one Spencer is like let's just stay in the jungle yeah and Martha because he's like hey I'm badass in the jungle and yeah. I was like is that even an option <laughs> I guess so yeah exactly maybe if one person's in nope that doesn't make sense because of the after credit scene. I was going to say, if one person's in the game, then the game's not over. So yeah. then maybe Jum that's the way to beat Jumanji, is to always have one person in the game. Right. But that's not right. Well, I don't think the end scene is canon, personally. But. Yeah, I think it is. All right. So yeah, they all kind of work... Well, they don't work together as so much as like all kind of use their own skill at the end. Yeah, she does dance fighting again. She does dance fighting again. Gets nunchucks, and then nunchuck who's it up. Yeah. And they all win. They all win, and then they go back into the real world, and they go to Nora's diner. Yeah. And it turns out that Nora's diner is owned by Aunt Nora from 1995 Jumanji. Yeah, she's and back. apparently she's into Danny DeVito, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be a manager, even though he can't really walk that well. Well, it's assumed when he heals up a little. Yeah. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> and then the mom has a heat man come over. Yeah. I don't know what they're called, apparently. Furnace dude. Furnace repairman. And yeah. he's like, oh, cool, a video game. I'm going to not do my job and touch this. Yeah. And then in a post credit scene, animals are running down the street. Ostriches. Ostriches. Specifically. Yeah. yeah. They're running down the street. And then the, the friends are like, rut row. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah, because well, at the end, Spencer's, they're like, okay, let's not do that again. And they're like, we thought we just did that last time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, it's just animals running down the street. And I was like, I don't know about that. You're, you're breaking your own premise here again. <laughs> Although, mm -hmm. for the next movie, mm -hmm. if Jumanji <clears throat> comes into the real world, yeah. it would be kind of fun to have the characters that they play mm. be in the real world, right. but be video game characters. Sure. So they're very one dimensional and they don't understand it'd be the fish out of water, but in the other context. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that could be fun for sure. But then. And then like fucking up because they like expect video game physics to work <laughs> in real life. Yeah, yeah. But I was say, but then on the kind of like the timing level, because it's like Jumanji 95. When they win the game, it resets time back. Oh, so that's it, right. So the same situation happen here. It's like if they win the game, it reset back to 2019 kind of thing. Oh, good point. Because apparently the board game can control time. <laughs> well, it, I guess it reset because that's when the game started. Yeah. No, that's what I mean. And, I uh, which I did like that element in the Welcome to the Jungle when they won. It just, like, it spat uh, Colin Hanks back to his time yeah. and then spat them out at, at their, their time. time. And I was yeah. like, oh, that was kind of like well executed in that he didn't just appear there with them and be like, I'm a kid from the 90s yeah, in 2017 yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a lot of, you can't think too hard about yeah, Shibachi. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I like I like that idea. That would be actually a really fun idea to have yeah. like say, the Rock killing Karen and Jillian. And then and like, them they and... have to be friends with their like counterparts, yeah, right? Yeah. And the Rock's like, you or me? Yeah, <laughs> just like, you don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, yes, I do, Bravestone. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, Bravestone. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, no, that could be kind of fun. Yeah. And like Jillian, or Karen Jillian could be all like super badass, right? Yeah. And like because she got to play kind of a meeker character right. in these movies so yeah. it'd be kind of fun i think no that that, that is a good idea i'm curious because I, I don't think they've announced who is who did it universal i don't know hire me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't remember who, who, made, who made it universal studios i'm available to write your script i'll put zero dick jokes in it <laughs> well because yeah i know like sony did the first one i think oh okay sony. Saying, no but i don't think they did these ones not Sony. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, do you think Sony's Into the Spider-Verse is going to end up on Disney Plus? No. That's too bad. I really want to watch it again. It was on TV last night. Damn it! I watched it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I don't think so. Cause I, I, just because of the, the, you know, the rights thing and stuff like that. Maybe not for a while. Like, yeah. not, not immediately. That's too bad, because this is a good movie. It's... One of the best Spider-Man movies made. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Side note. Side Sorry. Note. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I like I said. So this one I enjoyed, but maybe because I literally like like yeah, I watched Welcome to the Jungle and then watched this one the next day. Yeah. So it was pretty like, it's super samey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah when yeah, you watch yeah. them like one back to back, but I, I was also kind of like, oh, it, it kind of you know has like a, a, a you know a through ish narrative because it's the same characters and the yeah. same situation. That I was kind of like, you know, and they learn a slightly different lesson, sort of. Like, the first one's about, you know, working together and etc. And then the second one's kind of just like, you know, about growing up and mortality and just like, hey, life is what it is kind of thing. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's good lessons about like, hey, you know, don't be a bad person or, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, yeah, so I, I enjoyed... Of the newer ones, I enjoyed the first one more. Yeah, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. But I do think it's because the second one is so similar. Yeah. And like I said, like when we were talking before, I do kind of get them all jumbled in my head. Right. I think yeah. it doesn't help that they all wear the same clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I think that's like... That's I know I the saying. horse is in the second one. Yes. No, but like that's what I was saying. Like It's like I get it. They can just write something. But it would have been... Could have been better had they written it super differently. Yeah. Or, or yeah, just like... You know, or if there was glitching, like I said, like mm. you could keep the plot pretty much the same, but mm. like have like weird background glitchy things, right? And then I would differentiate it from the first one. Or maybe, like you say, in they do kind of a thing where 
uh, instead of it's just the avatars coming out, like they somehow become the avatars mm. in the real world. Yeah. Then maybe that could, that would also be like, could be like a good idea for the third one because then, like you said, it changes the situation and then it wouldn't, they didn't have to write the same, f- it's a, it's four more levels of Jumanji, right? I just think it would be cool to have like the avatars in the real world yeah. as the avatars. Yes. So like. I agree. That'd be pretty fun. Brave Stone is super like bravado, yeah. kind of like. Smoldering intensity. Smoldering intensity. <laughs> expects everything to work the way it would yeah, work yeah. in the video game. And like Spencer has to help him be in the real world. Yeah. And like, yeah, Karen Gillian is just like badass just like wants to kill everything doesn't yeah, yeah. talk at all like just like starts murdering men becomes nebula from yeah becomes <laughs> nebula and like if jack bat black is kind of like a i don't know like a kind of almost stuck up cartographer oh yeah, yeah that'd kind be of kind of, of fun more like yeah, and like bethany's trying tradition. to help him but he's like what do you know yeah you're, you're a, a woman, woman. <laughs> And then, like, Kevin Hart is super, like, timid yeah. and mild. And well, he's like, mouse. And he's mouse, right? So yeah. Fridge has to kind of, like... Imbue him some confidence yeah. and stuff. I and just like, no, that... man, you're a zoologist. It's badass. Because, like, yeah, so, like, each character kind of has to help level out, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's really a good idea. And... Call me, you <laughs> universal Sony... Whoever. <laughs> Miramax. Yeah. Fox. It's definitely not the last two. <laughs> it's not Miramax, I'm yeah. so sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like I said, I, I didn't enjoy the second one as much, but it was still entertaining enough that I was kind of like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. It was, it was a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. I would recommend seeing all of them. Yeah. Well, and I think uh, just like I said, I was just so surprised because, um, I do like Dwayne Johnson, but I don't watch a lot of his movies because... He's always the same. Yeah, but it, like a lot of his movies, like the Fast and Furious franchise I'm not a fan of, so I just don't yeah. watch them, but it's like, I like him. You know what I mean? And he was very charismatic in this he's one. He's super likable. Yeah, he's super likable. I like Karen Gillian. I'm a big fan of her. She's and, great. And Jack Black is great. I'm not a big fan of Kevin Hart, but I was like, he's good and serviceable and doing his good job, so. You know, Karen Gillian, for somebody who doesn't have, like, super great name recognition mm-hmm. among, like, most of the population. Sure. She's in a lot of big franchises, Sure, right? absolutely. Doctor Who, Jumanji... Um, Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. Well, and like we talked about in our Endgame review, she was very much given like tons to do in Endgame. Like oh, she yeah. was like a central she was great. plot point of the entire movie. So, yeah. And she's, she's really good as Nebula. I like her as Nebula. She's so, so good. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. yeah. Good for her. Good for them. It, it, like yeah. I said, just from a business standpoint, it's just kind of funny that it's like, were they to do a third one in a year and a half from now or two years that it's just like, if it was the same again, it would be like. I get it, but no, you know, no, they switch have it up. To, they gotta go with my idea. <clears throat> but it, like I said, it's just like just it's credit so, me in the writing. They can just they, <laughs> they can just write royalties. write four more levels, and it's just like and the game is on, right? Yeah, and they get in there somehow. <laughs> yeah, so th- that's the third movie is what I think should happen, and mm. then the fourth movie we get the Jumanji origin story that's somehow in space. <laughs> that was Zithura. <laughs> no, no, but we need the origin of Jumanji, and they have to go to the moon to figure it out. Right. Well, I was gonna say, or you do like the whole. Like you do a Jumanji in the past. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, like, you know, wherever. In the 1800s or something. <laughs> yeah, doesn't that have, that's how uh, the first Jumanji starts. Yeah, it opens up with, like, in Pilgrim times yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> and they bury it in the ground. Steampunk Jumanji. <gasps> oh my god, you could have said it in Victorian times, and yeah. then when you go in the game, it's steampunk. Yes, there you go. That would be fun. Except they can't do good steampunk, so it'd sure. be garbage. Yeah, my only main steampunk complaint... is only good in theory. Yeah, <laughs> very much. In the... Well, in, or in like book form or art form. <laughs> yeah, art form. <laughs> yeah. Some video games. Yeah, role playing games. So. Yeah, but like I don't know books though. It's not even good in books. Yeah. Well, I, and I all don't... all of the steampunk books I've read are trash. That's fair. My main complaint about the the, the newer two is that the jungle doesn't feel as antagonistic. Yeah. As I would like. That's but that's probably because I want that horror element from that first one, which was the jungle is a terrifying place. You don't yeah. want to be in it. Don't want to be near it. Maybe that changed when it changed to a video game. There you go. Fine. <laughs> My only complaint was the dick jokes. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I just yeah. thought it was excessive. Okay. Cool. Unnecessary. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Should we wrap it up? Sure. Unless you have anything else to say. Sorry, I probably interrupted. Well, yeah, I, I probably saying. interrupted you too. Yeah. That's what we do on that's, this show. That's true. <laughs> that's what we do on our show. Yes. We'll uh, rename it Devin and Dan Interrupt Each Other. <laughs> that's the rebrand. Yeah. 
<laughs> we hate movies. <laughs> we don't hate movies. I know. Oh, actually, speaking of, we did get... Because I assume you're about to wrap up and talk about... Oh, yeah. Uh, did we get an email? Yeah, we did get an email. <gasps> but I think it was from our same person we emailed last time, Thomas. They're like, where the fuck is my Doctor Who? I know, because he recommends the Doctor Who again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. But he recommends there's like a Doctor Who movie, I guess? Oh, yeah, yeah. From 96? Has... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that. that. He's, he's a fancy boy in it. Oh. So, yeah, he recommends some movies and some TV shows. Very much appreciated. Well, what movies does he recommend? Uh, so Akira from 88, which I might do a solo. Yeah, that's good. Because I really love Akira. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, Tony wants me to watch it too. It's excellent. I uh, just feel like if both of you like it, I won't. <laughs> um, the Pokemon first movie, because we did talk about uh, Detect Pikachu. So oh, always... I would totally I would totally do one. <laughs> I think you actually mentioned that when we talked about this last time. Yeah, uh, all right, I'll do that. Yeah, Spirited Away, which is a, a great GB, movie. And we've talked about doing a Ghibli movie for a while. It's, it's always been a kind of a back pocket idea. You know, if we were gonna do a Ghibli, I'd want to do Mon- Mononoke. Mononoke. That's or, good stuff. or like Mononoke, Spirited Away, and Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, like that would probably be more likely the focus is just talking those about are my those three. Three favorite. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty excellent. <laughs> um, and then for shows, again, the Doctor Who, Power Rangers, and Pokemon, which I believe was recommended last time. Mmm. Yeah, we should, uh, we should get on that. Maybe I'll watch, maybe I'll do a solo episode on Pokemon the movie. Yeah? Because I vaguely remember it. Well, I think there, because there's a, uh, this one, Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Yeah, which wasn't actually the first movie. <laughs> That's right, it was the, the second first movie. North American movie. That's right, yeah. yeah. So Maybe, hey, Dan, mm. maybe I should watch it and then tell you about it. Yeah, we've done that in the past, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We could be a Jurassic Park, right? Maybe it could be a special, kind of like we just did for our Star Wars. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Sure. But anyway, thanks for contacting us. You can do so at tomiuselessness at gmail.com or through our website and social media. There will be a Pokemon movie coming shortly episode. No, oh, there you go. It's yes. happening. <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so social media, Tome of Uselessness, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Website, tomeofuselessness.com. Gmail, tomeofuselessness at gmail.com. That said, I'm not giving you our phone numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Yeah, and then bye. hear the drums. Oh, no! <laughs> Chupanji. Chupanji.